Praise you, Lord. Do you affirm the testimony about the gift according to this trial shall be the truth? So help you, God. Yes, I do. Take a seat in the witness stand. State your name again for the record. It's the very last name. Catherine Lisey, L E I S Y. Good afternoon, Agent Lisey. Good afternoon. Who do you work for? I work for the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, more commonly referred to as SLED. And what do you do there? I am a forensic scientist assigned to the DNA casework unit, and I am currently assigned to the team that works homicides and other violent crimes. Okay. How long have you been at SLED? A little over 18 years. And can you describe your educational background and special training in forensic sciences? I have a Bachelor of Science degree in genetic engineering from Cedar Crest College in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Once I was hired by SLED, I received in-house training by other court-qualified analysts in all the different types of tests and analyses that I'm required to perform. I had to pass competency tests before I could begin actual casework on anything that was submitted to the laboratory. I'm also required to perform proficiency testing multiple times a year to show that I am following protocols correctly and also that those protocols work as we anticipate that they will. I am required to participate in continuing education on an annual basis that consists of keeping up to date with current readings as well as attending seminars or conferences that help keep us up to date with the most uh, recent available technologies in forensic DNA testing. I also have approximately four years of experience at a private DNA testing facility that was known as Orchid Cellmark prior to my time at SLED, and I perform the same types of test analyses there that I do at SLED. Okay, and about how many times have you testified as an expert in forensic DNA analysis? I have testified, I believe, on over 150 occasions at this point, and that's in counties throughout the state of South Carolina as well as jurisdictions in California, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Florida, the District of Columbia, United States Federal Court, and a United States Military Court Martial at Fort Jackson. Thank you, Agent. At this time, the state would offer Agent Lisey as a, an expert in forensic DNA analysis. No objection. All right, thank you, Sir. Well, Thank you. Agent Lacey, did you test a number of items um, in this case that we're here for today? Yes, I did. All right, um, I'm going to hand you what has been entered as state 69 and ask if you recognize this item. Yes, I do. What is it? This is what was identified as a blood spot from Terry Lewis. And this would be an item that we would use to develop a known DNA profile from an individual. Uh, that profile can then be compared to evidence root profiles. Okay, and so were you able to develop Terry Lewis's DNA profile from this blood spot? Yes, I was. Okay. I'm handing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 70. Ask if you can identify what is contained in this bag. This heat shield pouch contains a set of swabs that were sent to the laboratory. Um, they were submitted as swabs from the floor. Uh, more specifically, they were identified as swab from floor labeled number 15, swab from floor labeled number 16, and swab from floor labeled number 17. Okay, did you test these items? I did. All right, I would enter 70 at this time. No objection, Your Honor. All right, 70 without objection. Okay, and what results did you get from those swabs that you tested? The swabs were what we refer to as being sub-itemized. So each of the swabs from the floor was tested individually. The swab that was labeled number 15 as submitted was treated as SLED sub-item 9.1. The first step in testing that particular item was what we refer to as a presumptive serological test. So we're looking for the possible presence of a bodily fluid. That item was presumptively positive for the presence of blood meaning blood was possibly present on that item. I was able to develop a partial DNA profile from that item. And the fact that it's partial just means that I was not able to develop information at all of the locations that were tested. 
but the material and the profile that I developed was suitable for comparison to the profile from Terry Lewis. I interpreted that DNA profile as being single source, meaning it was consistent with being from just one individual. I then performed a comparison between that partial profile and the profile from Terry Lewis. And the way that SLED reports statistical analyses is what is called a likelihood ratio. And a likelihood ratio is a comparison between two possible explanations for the DNA profile that is developed. So for this particular instance with a single source profile, my two possible explanations are is that it is Terry Lewis contributing the DNA profile. My second possible explanation being that it is some unidentified, unrelated individual who is contributing this profile. And during the comparison, it was determined that the DNA profile developed from 9.1 is approximately 280 trillion times more likely if it is Terry Lewis contributing the DNA profile than if it is an unidentified, unrelated individual contributing. Okay, and 280 trillion has how many zeros? Uh, one trillion would be a one with uh, 12 zeros behind it. So lots of zeros. Correct. Okay. Um, can you give us the results from the swab from uh, labeled 16 and the swab from 17? So the swabs from number 16 and number 17 were sub-itemized as sled items 9.2 and 9.3 respectively. From both of those swabs, I developed a single source DNA profile that was suitable for comparison. It was the same profile developed from each of the swabs. Um, again, the first step was the serological test, and again, it was presumptively positive for the possible presence of blood. Um, I performed the same type of likelihood ratio calculation using this DNA profile and determined that the DNA profile developed from sled items 9.2 and 9.3 is approximately 100 septillion times more likely if Terry Lewis contributed the profile than if an unidentified, unrelated individual contributed the profile. All right, and again, I'll ask, how many zeros are in a septillion? Uh, one septillion would be a one with 24 zeros behind it. Okay, so 124 zeros. Correct. Okay. All right, and finally, I'm going to show you what has been marked and identified um, previously. States Exhibit 71. Ask if this is the final item that you tested. Yes, it is. Okay, and what is it? This particular item was identified as swabs from an entertainment center and then was identified as sled item number 10 internally. Okay, state would move 71 into evidence at this time. No objection. 71 without objection. Okay, and if you can please tell the jury what your results on this item was. For the set of swabs from the entertainment center, the serological test was negative uh, for the possible presence of blood. I did go ahead and attempt to perform DNA analysis on the item regardless, but no DNA profile was developed, uh, which indicates there was either not enough DNA present to develop a profile, or if there had been DNA, it had been degraded or broken down to the extent that I couldn't develop a profile. Okay. Thank you, Agent. Um, please answer any questions defense may have for you. Yes, ma'am. Is it correct that you did not receive the DNA to compare in this particular case to run this test until after Terry Lewis had died? But when did you receive the, um, the comparison swab? Uh, I would have to look uh, at the exact date that I took custody of it. Um, being a blood spot, I would assume it came from autopsy, but I'm not exactly sure of its time of collection. Do you mind looking? Not at all. So the blood spot uh, identified as being collected from Terry Lewis at autopsy was submitted to the laboratory on March 11th of 2020. It was then stored in our secured evidence control uh, department until I took physical custody of it on September the 13th of 2022. 
So you took physical custody of this to run your tests and what, when, September of 2022? Yes, ma'am, September 13th of 2022. And um, do you have any notation, I assume you would get no notation on when the original blood was collected from the scene? That's correct. Uh, typically, once the blood is collected from autopsy and submitted to the laboratory, we can only maintain and keep track of what happens once it's been submitted to us. So when it was collected, it's not something that I could testify to. You also can't contest, testify to um, how old the blood is that you have. That's correct. The, um, the area where there was no DNA detected near the entertainment center in, in, um, on your notations, no DNA. Does it, uh, do you have a test to determine whether or not it's animal um, blood or liquid? Well, for the swabs that were identified as being from near the entertainment center, that serological presumptive test was actually negative, so there was no indication of blood present on that set of swabs. If it was an animal substance, do you have a test that would determine that? The preliminary screening test that we use is not human specific, so had it been from a pet, from some other animal, we would have expected a positive serological result from that. Did you take any tests of any liquids? In any of your no the only items that i received were uh, the blood spot from autopsy which is essentially just a sterile filter paper that has blood poured on it and is then allowed to dry as well as multiple sets of swabs that had fluids potentially that were collected and then dried before submission i did not receive any physical liquids <coughs> thank you yes, I don't have anything further. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You may be excused. Thank you. That was the state's final witness, so the state rests its case at this time. All right. Uh, let me give them a break and we'll take up what's next. So uh, would y'all please take about a 15 minute break and then we'll be back with you.